Objection! Okay, welcome back. We're halfway through this case. Let's see what the situation is. Well, it's probably not very good considering that we didn't win in the first day. Mm, as far as we know, yeah. It's dead, dead, dick gumshoe. Or Mr. Scruffy Detective, apparently. Nonsense, Phoenix. It doesn't matter if Maya's in trouble. You're never too busy to talk to Dick Gumshoe. So, Dick, what does the future hold? I don't think he's quite grasped the concept of getting fired. Give him some time. You're gonna have to work here? Whoever translated this was probably drunk. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, doesn't he also get fired in the, the fifth case of the first game? Not that this case references that in any way, because this came before it, just to make things confusing. You can't keep calling him Mr. Scruffy Detective. He's Mr. Scruffy Gumshoe. Or Dick. Or Richard. Maybe Gumshoe knows a little bit more about Edgeworth. Yeah, he did seem a little bit cold at the end in court. She was kind of there, but not really. Yes, that thing. Considering that she's managing him, it doesn't really seem like a very good move. And hopefully by the end of this investigation, we should know the truth. Yeah, I wonder how she's doing with the uh, with the bullet in her shoulder, just like her dad, kind of ironically. Oh dear, why the glum face? Resting at the hospital, you say? Well, I'm alive, so... Nah. 
Now, what kind of man would I be if I took a child to a hospital to get whipped by a woman? I had a feeling it might be that one. What do you mean it can't hurt to stop by? It really can! She's still got a whip! But you know what? The next move actually is to go and see her. So, uh, to the hottie clinic. What kind of man would take a child to get whipped? Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, apparently. Hello again, whoever you are. Well, just look at what the cat dragged in. Yeah. Have you been charged with anything yet? Her opponent was a gun? That's one way of putting it, I suppose. Why am I not surprised? Oh dear. Oh! I guess you got what you wanted. I'm not seeing a bullet hole in the clothes. So then, Friska, as that guy just called her. How's it going? Tell us about the shooting. Really? Hopefully the wrist opposite the shoulder that she was shot on, otherwise that could have really, really hurt. I expect it's the deal between her and Adrian Andrews, but let's find out more. No, I don't think so. If anything, I probably would have won. The end justifies the means. Having recently finished Dual Destinies, this kind of makes sense. I bet the Dark Age of the Lord did this. I don't think she really gives a shit. See?
Also, it's probably the longest amount of time that she's ever had where she's not whipping anybody. So she had to do it at some point. But anyway, she's gone, but Edgeworth is still here, so let's have a talk. Let's talk about today's trial. He did save us all a lot of time. Oh, right, yeah, the card. Let's talk about the card. We already know that it's connected to the assassin in some way. That's the one! Shelly the Killer, you say? Shelly. I see. That does explain the shell. <laughs> Good thing his name isn't Dick. But let's find out exactly what Edgeworth knows about this assassin. Nobody ever got them a chair. I believe that is probably the case, yes. So by leaving that card there, what he's doing is essentially admitting that he's killed them. So when the card is inevitably found during a murder investigation, everybody then knows that a de killer is responsible. Yes, Phoenix, come on. If Adrian Andrews didn't pick that card up, well, it would have saved us all a lot of trouble. But now here we are. I think I can trust him with this. Let's tell him about Maya's situation. It's as simple as that, apparently. We actually haven't heard from Maya or Dekilla, so we don't actually know if she's still alive. And don't think the game wouldn't go there. Remember Mia. Yeah, I'm pretty certain about that now. That bit, mm, uh, not so sure about.
Okay, letter of introduction. I suppose that means we can go to the hotel and start our investigation then. I guess it is possible, and it would explain the kidnapping, but I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing through Maya's perspective again. I guess she's not dead. That's a good start. Oh, no. I think this may have happened a while ago. This is when she found the card and unlocked the door. Okay, well, I've actually got control now. Um, well, let's move then. Let's move. Not really much of a choice, but it'll have to do. Okay, look at the size of that television. Looks like a, well, some sort of living room or an office, maybe? I don't think we're in the hotel. That is a good plan. Even if I can't escape, I can give the information to Mia. So, let's examine stuff. Let's see if we can escape. Oh well, never mind. Uh... Is that a bear on the sofa? It's an emo bear. Hmm, right, okay, well, let's see. Uh, there's something on the table here, some sort of picture frame. Celeste. That could be a really, really big clue. Um, okay, what about all this electronic equipment over here? Ah, right, yes. It couldn't last forever, I suppose. Maybe he spent just a little bit too long sunbathing. Not only an assassin, an assassin with a monocle. Do not mess with him. And that is all we're going to get, so we're back to Phoenix and Pearl.
Okay, I'm thinking that Phoenix is right. I want to hear what Engard has got to say once again. So, uh, before we start the investigation back at the hotel, let's go back to the detention center. Or perhaps not. Oh, okay. Wasn't a wasted trip then. Okay. Ah, oh, there's music again. Now, somebody in the comments of one of the previous videos in this case said that they really liked this music, and I'm beginning to agree with them. Dare I say it's refreshing like a spring breeze? Well, that's a coincidence, because I've got a shoe named Cat. So basically, he wants us to go and feed his pet cat. Fair enough, I suppose. All right, okay, now, how do I get to his house? I think I have to go to the hotel, and then to his house. But I can't go to the hotel, so let's go back to my office. That's all he's doing, he's just standing there grinning. Yeah, it's not there, I think it's accessible from the lobby. If you were wearing a robe and wizard hat, I might give those words some credence, but, you know, you're in a spacesuit. Oh god, stop, stop, I don't even want to talk to you, I just want to get to his house! Did she just have a heart attack or something? Ugh, oh, damn. Well, you know what, we're here, so we might as well just drop off the letter of introduction. Obviously, I want to get to Shu really quickly, so I'll, I'll go inside later on, but let's just get this out of the way. Are we sure it wasn't her that made him leave prosecuting for a year? Lucky him. Ah! 
Ah, I thought you were gone. I can't go into Engard's room. Why? Fair enough. Right, okay, we'll be back in a moment, but we've got to go to Matt's house first, so um, it's gonna be the living room, I believe. Let's go. Everything is so bright and shiny. Oh, how cute. Ah, oh, who's this refined looking gentleman? Who is in no way related to the bellboy or the assassin. Really, it's a coincidence. Honestly. John Doe. <laughs> really? Well, we couldn't talk to Ingard directly, so maybe the butler can tell us a bit more. Yeah, here we go. Let's talk about Matt. No luck there, but maybe he can talk about himself. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I see where this is going. Yeah. Okay, what about the cat? Are you kidding me? You can't even talk about the goddamn cat. I suppose not, if this guy's taking care of it all. Okay, so that's dealt with. Uh, just before I leave though, I want to examine something. I imagine you've noticed it as well, but um, I really want to examine this bike. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's the door to the right. Poor Phoenix. We have the benefit of two perspectives. Unfortunately, he does not. So, our only choice now is to leave. And we're going back to the hotel. And of course, we've already given Old Bag the letter of introduction, so we should be able to go anywhere, apart from Engard's room.
Viola Hall is still as dazzling as ever, I see. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's nothing to see here, so let's move on to the hallway. Oh, Christ. She must be pretty hungry then. Oh, I know what she wants. Because she is a devil woman. She will turn into an old bag. But uh, anyway, if she's here, let's just talk to her. Um, let's get this out of the way. Let's talk about the camera. So she's not getting the camera back quite yet. Boo-hoo, what a shame, how sad. Night of the murder, please. I still have no evidence she was the murderer, but I just want to believe she was. Oh, here we go, a lot of special coming right up. Of course you didn't. Are there really no security cameras in this hotel? It's never easy, is it? Anyway, the scandal. So, take it with a pinch of salt, yeah? Or I guess, in this case, a fistful of it. A lot of random bulldooters. Ah, that must be our three middle names. I don't think there's anything more she can offer us, so goodbye, Lotta. <laughs> oh, do you have to? I never thought I'd say this, but can Old Bag just come along and chase her off, please? Ah, oh, the sweet, blissful silence of an unlotted hallway. Right, there's only one place to go now, and that is Corridor's room. Which is still being occupied by about a hundred bears.
Could it be that Mr. Juan Corrida has actually come back to life in the form of one of these bears? Hey, you're bang on the money. Where were you when Lotta was outside? Zoinks. Yeah, all right, Shaggy, calm down. So what was she doing to make those weird noises? Crying, I hope. I really hope. I don't want to think about what it could be. Ah, no, no, ah! I genuinely would not be surprised if she's the killer in one of these cases and Lotta Hart is the victim. It's only a matter of time, I think. Pearl 1, Old Bag 0. Okay, so what about the memories of Corridor? Now, was it the same sort of luck that Jack Hammer had? certainly looks like it, but at least they're all bear-themed. Well, that, that table's not a bear, and those curtains, they're not bears. Perhaps Old Bag can tell us what the hell's going on with bears. <laughs> what? But what about the bear? Was he barehanded? Oh. Is she talking about in the show or in real life? Either way, it's probably bollocks. Right, and in this little scenario, the bear can talk. Poor son of a bitch. And so it was around that sort of time where one was murdered, I think. Oh shit! It's about time! Answer the damn question. No, it didn't. Even though he had... I was going to say good intentions, but that's not quite right. It's just brilliant, isn't it? 
it's looking more and more likely that Ingard hired the killer, and we have to get him not guilty, no matter what. Oh, he's gone to his alter ego, Snake Man. We don't need that to add to the pile of problems we already have. Did Oldberg just hear all of that? Maybe she did, maybe she didn't, I'm not sure. But what we need to do now is take this transceiver to an electronics expert, and he might not seem like the guy, but I think we gotta go and see Gumshoe. And he's back at the office, so let's go. Oh yeah, this is a good sign. It must be him. Of course not. This is Gumshoe we're talking about. Well, we have a little problem with the radio transceiver, and perhaps his work in the police force has made him quite familiar with electronic gadgets like this. So, uh, here. Um, hmm. It fixed itself. Well done, Phoenix. Maybe Gumshoe's so good at fixing electronics, he just has to look at it. Electromagnetic interference, you say? Do tell me more. <laughs> wow, that only just fits in the box. Yep, although in my case, that never really happened. It was usually the phone that fucked up. It's the little victories. One of the many, 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 many bears, perhaps? A listening device? Ooh, okay, now I'm interested. He's pumped, he's ready, let's do this.
<laughs> Maybe just a little bit too much, though. Okay, this seems like a pretty good lead, so I don't see the point in sitting around. So let's just go right back to the hotel and go back to his room. What do you mean we're finally here? We just came straight from the office. How the fuck are you here? No, no, Phoenix, don't apologize for this. There were no shortcuts. What the hell is he up to? Right, okay, so that might explain how he's here so quickly. So he went to the precinct and then went to the shops to buy one and still got here before us. Has he got a private jet that I just don't know about? Not exactly how I pictured this would go, but it might work. Okay, no, no, that's okay. It's only a small area. It shouldn't really be a problem. Full Santa Claus mode activated, apparently. As I recall, it basically works as examine, but everything I hover the cursor over might beep at me. <laughs> Hopefully more than a long hard stare in some cases. Okay, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, let's just try it out on this light. Yeah, you see, it's giving off quite a high reading. But that is obviously just a light, so that's understandable. So let's try something else. Nothing really out of the ordinary. I'm just going to wield it like a paintbrush and go up and down. Hold on. Unless this seven-foot monstrosity is also an alarm clock, we may have found it. Yeah, sounds pretty suspicious. I just happen to have brought my eye scooper outer. I'm sorry, Pearl, but it had to be done. Inside the bear's head, we find a camera and a transmitter with a timer as well. Pretty much, but we've got the electronics expert in our midst, so we might as well ask him all about it. Let's start with the camera. So 
So, presumably somebody was spying on Mr. Corridor. But who? Yeah, I think that's where the transmitter comes in. But again, we have the opportunity to talk with an expert, so here we go. I expect at this moment you're starting to connect a few dots. And these connected dots don't really look too good. Interesting. So this bear with the with the camera and the transmitter must have recorded the murder. Okay, so I've got the spy camera and now I've got the transmitter in the court record. This is good. Now, let's talk about Mr. Bear here. What I really want to know is who gave him as a present. Yeah, I think there's a strong possibility of that. And now finally we have the stuffed bear in the court record. Somehow fitting in. He has such passion, it's a bit of a shame he's not a detective anymore. And off he goes. A wild Edgeworth appears. It's better than nothing, I suppose, but if the killer knows, he's gonna hurt Maya. What's going on in this case? Gumshoe turns out to be an electronics expert, and now we've got Mr. Edgeworth here, expert on bears.
whoever he is, he's probably got to be very rich if he's just going to give this away as a present. <laughs> okay, good luck. Snatched up. No, it wasn't. It's still there. I'm beginning to think, no, probably not. Her last piece of testimony might actually have been the truth. And up next is one final investigation to find that truth. See you then.